wonderful morning out there welcome to another live broadcast my name is isaiah phillips akintola i want to welcome you this morning if you're joining us live and for everyone that will be connecting with us this morning welcome to another episode of our potter's gate online prayer school this is our prophetic prayer school this is the place where we pray where we get to know the heart of god where we get to receive new revelation fresh insight and direction for the day and of course for that which the spirit of god is doing in our time we live in an exciting season this is a period in time where the spirit of god is directing our hearts and leading us into new paths new directions new realities in the spirit so i want to welcome everyone this morning thank you so much my dear sister for connecting this morning thank you my dear sister amen for connecting I want to thank God for another beautiful, glorious day heaven has given to us. We have what a privilege to be part of this, you know, beautiful, glorious day. It's a privilege. In fact, it is an honor to be alive this morning and to see amen, what the Spirit of God will be unfolding to us. So as we begin to get our heart ready this morning to join other saints across the globe, across the world, and of course, angels to look into that which the spirit of god is proclaiming i believe this morning once again that we will once again flow in the directions and in the newness of that which the spirit of god has in stock for us we're all welcome this morning and we believe in the law for great things this morning thank you so much my brother thank you for connecting this morning also we are we have stepped into a day that is defined as the day of newness the day of new beginnings and like I've been trying to communicate this for a while, this new beginning is not, is not something that can be seen from the, our natural, you know, human sight. All right, we can look at this newness from the, you know, uh, um, the world perspective. No newness are established from the positions of the spirit and from the intentions of God. So we're going to deal with that this morning. We've been dealing with that. All right, we're going to look at some concepts that will allow us to further understand and walk amen in the speakings of god for this brand new day let us pray father we honor you this morning once again we glorify your name we celebrate your goodness love and kindness they are new every morning thank you lord that is through your grace your mercy that we are not consumed we thank you lord that you have found us worthy and 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 and, and faithful this morning to be alive to be part of the company of them yes that you are leading to this new realm this new position yes in your prophetic calendar newness is defined by what your spirit is doing in the earth newness is defined by what you are proclaiming and declaring newness is not defined by what we see in the natural human human, human side no we see your word we see your will we see your counsel yes in newness your word declares that you 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 walk yes in newness every day is new to you as we understand what you mean by newness and we flow oh god leaving behind that which you define as the old help us father to press further our desire is to continue to journey forth to continue to progress in what in what you have planned and, and programmed for us is our desire to carry out our mission our mandate oh god in our own day as david served his generation he served his day we want to serve you in this brand new day in this brand new season in this new epoch we want to flow yes lord we want to continue to pour forth oh god your heart your mind we want to continue to showcase yes what you're speaking our life your word declares has become a living epistle known and read of all men so we thank you this morning continue to use us to speak continue to use us oh god to proclaim continue to use us to raise the standard and continue to walk in our life those areas that we are we're finding challenging we're struggling with father as we surrender this morning as we lay on the altar this morning may your spirit once again fall upon this area may you consume those areas in your fire purify us oh god make us worthy oh god make us vessels oh god this morning that is unto honor we bless you we glorify your name we ask corporately may your kingdom come may your will be done this morning we present our life to you our thoughts 
minds, yes, desire, every aspect of our being, we present them, we yield them to you this morning. We proclaim that we diminish, that you, Christ alone, may increase in our life. It is our desire this morning to apprehend you as you have apprehended us. We want to see you. We want to know you. We want to please you. We want to honor you. We want to glorify you. Let every breath that we breathe, oh God, bring pleasure and glory unto you. Let everything that we do this morning, every thought, oh God, that we, we process this morning, let it be, oh God, that which bring honor and glory to you. May we have the grace and strength this morning to resist, to reject that which you reject, oh God. May we hate the things that you hate. May we embrace the things that you love. May your name be glorified this morning. We bind our mind to you. We bind our thoughts to you. We bind our desire to you. Yes, Lord, you are bringing us to the place of fullness, a place of perfection, a place of maturity. Yes, Lord, as you did in the lives of those who have journeyed ahead of us, Father, we embrace their pattern this morning. As we look into Noah, as we look into Enoch, as we look into Enos, as we look into the life, yes, oh God, of Abraham, as we look into the life, oh God, of Methuselah, as we look into, Almighty God, the life, oh God, yes, of Enoch, we look into the life of David, we look into the life of Joshua, we look into the life of Esther, we look into the life of, of Sarah, oh God, we look into the life of Abigail, Deborah, we look into the life of the Elizabeth, Mary, as we look at all of these people, their patterns speaking to us prophetically today of how we need to walk. They, they, each of them carry a quality, a, a capacity, yes, a grace, a strength that is found in our Lord Jesus. And so, Father, we draw from them this morning. We say, Father, may you, may you, may you be perfected in us as we get perfected in all of these men who have gone ahead of us. That as we read the word, the word will read us. That the word, yes, will scan us. And the word will find anything in our life that is not of you, oh God. And those things we will reject this morning. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you this morning. May your kingdom come. Oh Lord, may your will be done in our lives, in our space, within our homes, family. May your kingdom come into our nation, into our cities, oh God. May your kingdom come, Lord, into our continent. May your kingdom come, Lord, into this generation. Is our desire this morning to see the manifestation, to see your intention. Yes, Lord, being established in every facet of human existence. It is our prayer. It is our desire to see the earth lit up, oh God, with the everlasting gospel of the angel. You said the angel, yes, came and he he, he, he proclaimed and declared, yes, this gospel and it, it, it illuminates the world. It illuminates the earth. It's our prayer this morning that as we proclaim this word from this hill, from this mountain, oh God, that there will be illumination, oh God, that there will be clarity. There will be clarity, understanding that darkness will disappear is our prayer this morning, that our prayer, oh God, will bring light to every dark area, oh God, in systems, in Walk in, in the workplace, oh God, in homes, family, yes, Lord, in government. We thank you this morning that our prayer, oh God, yes, is what you war with. And so, Father, we present to you purity of heart that our prayer may pierce the heavens, may penetrate boundaries, barriers, walls, high walls, that our prayer this morning will soar in the realm of the spirit. We love you, Father. We give you glory. We take our position this morning. We ask Jesus be glorified in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, uh, uh, Sister Myrtle, also for connecting this morning. I, I just quickly want to draw our attention to some few points this morning as we continue to engage in prayer. Of course, when we engage in prayer, we engage in the spirit of in the spirit of transformation, reformation, in the spirit of ref, re, restoration. But we also engage, hallelujah, with, with with resistance, with walls, with the gates of darkness, with the powers of hell. You see, so we have to have, you know, we have to continue to you know develop and walk in that you know ability of all that prayer represent and means all right prayer is warfare prayer amen is 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 engaging is challenging is moving against the tide all right when we begin to pray we begin to you know push forward because there's always a push back all right we pray when we pray there's there's a release of grace and strength to move forward hallelujah 
that's where we you know we gain ground we gain ground in the place of prayer so i i really want to once again this morning encourage us as we as we track a few points this morning all right we're dealing with newness i don't want us to miss that you know context that you know we've been looking into all right uh, like i said it's so easy for men to, to to get to a point all right that they begin to lose track we begin to lose focus of what matters of what the lord all right is doing or uh, has began to do in our life it's it's one of the things that have defeated men in, from generation to generation amen it's time and 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 you see time will always cause distraction when we don't have a sense of vision a sense of purpose a sense of direction a sense of continuity when we are not working in the power of the economy of god we we lose a sense of faithfulness remember the core the heart of the economy of god is that a man a man be found faithful the bible says amen it is it is it is required that a steward be found faithful our position of faithfulness is what allow amen the the, the, the things of god to continue to be poured into us okay we have to be a faithful steward a faithful servant all right we are faithful to the things of god so we have to daily renew our our mind we have to daily rehearse who we are amen that's one of the things that i do or else you see i can easily be distracted and be carried away by so many things all right and i'm not talking about just the issue of sin right now even the things that really are not expedient all right there are words that are in seasons and there are words that are out of season one of the things that i've believed the lord to help me to do is to always bring a current word a seasoned word all right all right there are words that yes they are good we need them for edification but there are words that you know gives you that quantum leap that pushes you from where you are to the next place there are words that keeps you amen in the path on the path amen that continue to you know lead you forth in a, in, into that which the spirit of god is doing and that's not an easy thing to do friends Particularly when you live in a world where you have to speak into issues, you have to speak into, you know, things, uh, you understand, <clears throat> particularly when you're a voice, you know, uh, you know, when I woke up this morning, I tell you, my body was like, why don't you just continue to sleep? In fact, my, my wife was saying, why don't you just, why don't you just lie down? I said, you know, when the Lord begins to make you a father of the nation, you cannot do that. You've got to consider other things. Now, that, those, are, those are sense of responsibility that must dawn on us. Certain things must dawn on you. You just must realize that you, you cannot be who you were before. You cannot do things the way you used to do them. You cannot live your life in the context of how you used to live your life, you know, five, you know, six months ago. You have to understand that the Lord, amen, is shifting you. He's bringing you into something. And you have to, that, that must become an awareness that you cannot just, well, you just know it feasibly. It's just there. I know it. God, God is doing a new thing. No, no. You have to, you have to own that newness. You have to own the new you have to take your place you have to take charge hallelujah you have to present yourself you have to say lord this is me I'm, uh, they, they're not going to be looking for you and say where this guy in this day of newness where where is this lady where is this guy no you have to be present you have to make your journey there in cold amen in winter amen in, in in summer whatever the season may look amen or whatever the situation may feel like amen you have to avail yourself to that which heaven is proclaiming and demanding Every other thing must be shoved away. Every other thing must be put put aside. Amen. This is the day of the Lord. And in the day of the Lord, the Lord requires a people that can present themselves, hallelujah, in the reality of what he is proclaiming and declaring. And see, that, that's what makes our walk a bit challenging from the rest. We're tracking, we're tracking something. You know, we, we, we're scanning things. We're finding things. We, we, we're trying to create the path. You know, I, I have this image in my, in, my, in, my, in my brain as I'm speaking right now. You know, when, when, when a war, you know, has, has ravaged a society and, 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 and all kinds of things are planted in terms of trying to still, you know, destroy so many lives. Okay, the war has ceased, but there are, there are still bombs. There are still, you know, grenades. There are still landmines planted all over. Now, you, you can't just be walking like a, you know, they say it's freedom. So you just walk in freedom. You discover that you will be amputated. Your leg will be cut off because, you know, there are all kinds of things that the enemy has planted that you are not aware of. So in the day that we proclaim newness, people like us, amen, will have to go, amen, and diffuse things. 
diffuse things because now our families are coming out our everybody's coming out amen into this new day amen and you know people are getting so excited you know you cannot walk in that spirit of excitement you have to understand amen that the people must go ahead amen and clear the path you have to clear the landmines you know when i came to this nation and i began to deal with the issues of apartheid one of the things the lord spoke to me is that there are there are landmines of apartheid all right that are still there that have not been diffused unfortunately many people don't even understand these things that are landmines so you just step there boom <laughs> You, you become demobilized. That's why people cannot rise up. Because that spirit, amen, is, is, is cutting, chopping their legs, chopping their hands. All right, we need we need we need wise master builders. We need amen field engineers. We need engineers, people that can go into the field, amen. We need special force, amen, that can go into the field and start diffusing, amen, certain landmines. Those landmines are things we've got to correct so that we don't make the mistake of the past. We don't we don't fall into the issues, amen, that you know people of the past fell into. We have to understand the, the way of engaging, the way of stepping out. We have to know how to lead forth our people we have to know how to give clarity in the spirit and direction it, it may look like in the natural that we're not doing anything people may never even get to know who we are but guess what we are the special one it's like we don't even exist you know there are there are there are certain people even in government certain security guy it's like they don't exist but they are the one doing all the major work if there is you know a, a terrorist you know attack or something that they pick in this i mean they must make sure that amen everything is clear without everything everybody without people don't even without people knowing so we have to understand our place our position we have to know the things the spirit of god amen is saying like i said what came to my mouth while i was speaking you know is this image of this you know uh, army guys all right that got, they've got this special thing to you know to detect where you know landmines are planted are planted all right I mean, if you look at some some war zone, they said the people people who 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 lose their life, you know, after war are even more than the people, all right, that were killed during the war because there were landmines, there were all kinds of things planted that people didn't know. You think, okay, this is everything has come to normalcy. That's why I keep saying people are making the mistake. They say, oh well, everything has come to normalcy. Let's just go back. <laughs> yes, you're going back, but guess what? The enemy is at work, and I'm not focused on the enemy. I'm focusing on Christ. But we cannot be focused on Christ and be naive and be naive, amen, of the of the tricks of the enemy. The Bible says he's come to steal. You know, the question you must, you must be asking yourself, what's the devil trying to steal in my life? He's come to kill. What does he want to kill in my life? Amen. He's come to destroy. What is his target of destruction in my life, in my, in my home, in my community? You have to know that for yourself. <laughs> you have to know that. I have to know that for myself. What was what, what, the devil trying to, what is so precious in my life amen, that the devil wants to steal? You know, you don't steal from somebody, you know, from, from somebody you have more than, you steal, from, you steal from people who have more than you, you steal from people you believe, or right, I've got something precious, yes, that's what happens. So there must be something precious, something special, there's something very, you know, you know very treasurable in your life that the devil wants to steal. And this is not the time to go into sleep because when, when you go into sleep, the enemy is sneaking. When wild men were sleeping. And of course, when we say sleeping, it's not, it's not somebody just physically snoring. It's a, it's a condition of, of losing consciousness. It's a condition of losing spiritual consciousness. You just go and do your own thing, not minding. <laughs> you fall into the ditch. You fall into the trap. <clears throat> so we have to understand, amen, friends, what the Lord is. Amen is doing where we are, how we must advance and track the reality, amen, of, of the day before us. There is a day that is appearing, but it's still foggy out there. It's still foggy. So we, we have to journey and track, amen, with care. We have to understand how to move. We have to take time to pray in the spirit so that our discernment can be can be enhanced. Hallelujah. Our con concept of tracking things and picking signal, amen, can you know can be enhanced. Hallelujah. We, we can pick signals like waves, hallelujah. We can pick things coming from afar. We can pick things, amen, that you know others are not seeing. That's who we are. Yesterday, my family, they're watching this, uh, you know, documentary of, you know, uh, uh, intelligent birds. It's amazing what you see these birds do. <laughs> birds. You, you just get shocked. 
how God has invested intelligence in animal intelligence in animals how much more we made that's why i keep saying we underestimate who we are and the devil takes advantage amen of our our of our you know ignorance he takes advantage of that he said these ones they don't know who they are just finish them kill them <laughs> every bird has got a special you know inclination of how to feed of how to get food of how to survive have you noticed that when the weather changed, certain, certain birds, certain, you know, even flies, you don't see them again. You just wonder. <laughs> Everyone has gone into a hiding and hibernation. Come on, friends. <laughs> yes. Those things that, you know, they, they, they're like pests. They, they, dis, they disturb you. Let the, weather, let the weather change. You will wonder where they go to. So you guys are so intelligent to go hide. Yes. How much more humans behaving like beasts? The Bible says, he who, he who have no understanding of God is like a beast in the field. We have to wake up, friends. We have to, the Bible says, amen, our redemption is nearer than we first believe. We have to look up. He said, when you see certain things begin to happen in the earth, he said, look up. He didn't say focus on them. He said, look up. Your redemption draweth near. The activity taking, taking place in the earth, amen demands that we look up i mean natural human sense will say that we'll continue to look no your salvation is not in looking at those things is in looking up because our redemption and our salvation amen our solution is in looking up because those who are up they have a better vantage amen understanding of where things are happening if you are if you're in the midst of the challenge you're in the midst of the problem you can't see things clearly you will only see the things that is close to your nose but you won't see, amen, the things informing the things that you are seeing. You won't see the things informing the things that you're not seeing. You won't see, hallelujah, where the, where the enemy is coming from, the backside the enemy is coming from. You can only see, amen, from the vantage view of your, of your sight. Your sight is limited. <laughs> Our sight is limited. But if we, if we come up higher, we have a vantage view. We can, okay, okay. Now I see things. Why do you think the world today is spending so much money on drone? They know what they're doing. Drone is the is 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 is, is as big, in fact it's not is 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 the present you know concept of warfare. You don't need to you you just need a drone to move, get into places you can't get into. We must operate beyond the realms of drones. We must be able to see things clearly have insight and these are all spiritual condition amen of 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 who we are in you understand our spiritual identity must be enhanced must be enhanced all right i've said enough on that because i just felt i needed to bring that across to us we're tracking something amen how to enter into into the new day how to when we enter into the new day like i always say our prayer changes our focus and objective, amen, changes. Our, our, our sense of, you know, uh, engagement and, and, and motivation, amen, and movement must change, amen. Our pattern of work, amen, must change. Our location, of course, has changed. Therefore, we have to find, amen, the new language of the new day. <laughs> we have to find the new language, the new, la <clears throat> excuse me, the new language, amen, of the new day, of the new season. We have to find, amen, the concept of entire interacting earlier with the sphere with the atmosphere that we have been brought into i hope you understand all that i'm saying amen as spiritual you know uh, 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 dimensions they are spiritual terminologies all right we're using natural human language to understand some some spiritual or uh, spiritual realities okay and when we talk about new day i'm not just talking about something you can see in the new in your own natural realm remember the spiritual things you can't see them but they make impact amen in realms that we can see spiritual things cannot be seen if you want to touch it you can't touch it because no, can you touch the wind can you catch the wind you can't catch it the bible says, he who is born of the spirit is like the wind it's not a wind just like the bible says amen the holy spirit is like a dove the holy spirit is not a dove but the holy spirit reflect amen the dove reflects something amen that the lord will have us to understand about the dove is gentle but it's very intelligent all right and those that that's who we are all right before listen the church cannot be killed the church cannot be tamed the church as people say oh well they, they shut down the church the church was never shut down 
the church men believe and, and design and, and craft for themselves were shut down. But the church of the Lord has been active. <laughs> In the midst of all the shutdown, have you noticed I, I was active. I, I, the work continued. Can you see, see now, many of them have gone back to their, to their buildings. We are still here. <laughs> We're still here. We were here when they came. Amen. Many have gone. We're still here. Because there is something, the war is in the realm of the spirit. The war, amen, the battle, the, the real church, the real ecclesia, hallelujah, cannot be, cannot be defined and determined by a wall. You cannot, you can't stop it. You cannot, you know, put it to a location. It's in a location, but you cannot find this location. You cannot find this location. You've got to understand that we are spiritual beings. That's why the things that I'm saying, amen, you know, re, you know, res, you know, connects to your spirit. It, 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 it gives certain wisdom and understanding. You can connect to it. You can feel, amen, the impact of what I'm talking about because they are spiritual. Bible says the words, Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. So all of these things we, we must not forget. The word is spirit and the word is life. <clears throat> so let me take you back to Genesis chapter 8 just to give you a context. Amen. Just to give you a context. I want to, I want to highlight something this morning and I'll be done. Genesis chapter 8 verse, uh, verse let's pick it from verse 18. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wives and all the animals and all the creatures that moves along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the ground came out, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar. Please note that. Please don't, don't, don't just read through this and just continue. No, you've got to pause when you, when you see words like this. Then Noah built an altar. That's powerful. The first thing we do when we come into newness. Is to build, amen, a place where we can, where we can, where we can connect. You see, spiritual things must be built <laughs> in the material I'm putting together. People, I realize that people find it strange. People find it, you know, uh, 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 that's the word. They find it strange and they, they find it unspiritual to use terms like economy to describe the things of God, and that shows our religion has battered and destroyed the minds of people. You know, religion is a dif 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 different, dif difficult thing. It's a dangerous thing. People who are bound by the spirit of religion will be calling others, all right, you know, uh, uh, names. They'll be saying, oh, this one, is, this one is, a, is a devil. This one is, this one doesn't have insight. In fact, they will be saying, you are the one that has the spirit of religion. Because they don't understand that the scripture that they are reading, God used, God used, amen, things that people could relate to in their day. To put scripture together. If the scripture were written in our day, all right, the scripture will be written in computer language, will be written, amen, in the language, you know, of, you know, what the workplace industries, all right? So, because they use that to, to connect to the people, scripture must connect to the reality of, of, of people's life. You understand? There, there are books that, you know, I mean, I've got some materials that, you know, you, you read. The, 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 the terminology that the, 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 you know, the, the, the writer used amen, as scientific terms. But guess what? They are spiritual. So when people get scared because they hear the word economy. In fact, some people cannot take the term apostolic. <clears throat> they, you know, it, it's like they just get, uh, they get scared. And I understand that there are some people who have related the th spiritual things to just mere words. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, excuse me, how do I communicate to you if you cannot understand what I'm saying? If what I'm saying is not, is not making sense. If, if the things that I'm saying, amen, is, it, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, maybe that's just the word. It, it's not making sense to you. Bible says, how would they say amen? If people don't understand all right, we're in church and all we're doing is speaking in tongues. 
how how, do, how how but jesus said how will people understand in fact paul said how will people understand how will somebody coming to the church to the community all right for the first time understand when all we're doing is and you're expecting somebody to pick it in the spirit that's why the scripture was it was written even god allowed it amen that the word his word be written in the language of the day the language of the day back then was aramaic is Aramaic, amen, and is Greek, and of course Hebrew. Those are the three major languages, all right, to which, you know, the, you know, the days where, you know, uh, the scripture were written, amen, ruled. And the Lord allowed that for a reason. There's a, you see, when people can't think and cannot, and are not, are not properly taught about how God connects and communicates, what language do you think God was speaking to Adam in the garden? <laughs> I mean, how do you think that Paul was able to write many of the things he wrote? Because God, amen, granted him grace to know, to know places, to know people, to, you know, to, 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 to study. He was a well-studied person. And God used that, amen, to reach certain people. And of course, amen, to, to put scriptures together. We have to be intelligent. And in, intelligence, amen, is, is a spirit in Christ. God is a God of intelligence. When you look at his creation, when you look at things. Oh, when I look at some of the pictures, you know, I love to take pictures. That's one of my hobbies. I love, I mean, there's some pictures, you know, images that I've, I've just finished. Hopefully I'll be sharing some of them. When I look at, you know, the arrangement of flowers, when I look at things, when I, you know, you, you, ca you cannot but to just say there must be an intelligent God somewhere. Everything falling in line. This cannot be coincident. Why is it that Christians cannot think properly? <clears throat> because, you know, those who, who, who mentored them, who taught them, they told them just pray in tongues. You know, just be waiting for something to, to happen in the sky, something to fall in the sky. I mean, that's the mother of religious spirit. And the devil is using those ignorant people, amen, to, to hinder, to, to stop, to try to, you know, f you know, you know, I, I, I put a stop to the advancement of the things of God. When, 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 when Paul said, greet the house of Caesar, how did Paul reach the house of Caesar? How did Paul have friends in high places, yet never compromise his position? Festus knew Paul. We have to start thinking, am I strategic as Christians? We should never be afraid of language. Language basically amen, a means of communication and their means of interfacing. If you want to interface, I mean, if you if you want to understand how computer works, you must study computer language. There are people today that have become millionaires just by studying computer language. They can read the language. Everything in life has got a language. <clears throat> Everything has got a language. The fact that you don't understand it does not mean that they don't they don't communicate. Everything communicates. Everything. Living and non-living things. They communicate. If things are not communicating, how come you're watching me? How come you're hearing me? There are realms that we don't understand. There are things we don't understand. And the fact that we don't understand how they work does not mean we should disabuse them. We should say, well, these are just, you know, religious things. No. God has an economic system, and in that economy, there are structures, there are patterns, there are there are administrative, you know, concepts we've got to understand. Many of the things that we were teaching on leadership, I mean, I could remember my wife is she's watching today, you know, many of the things I was teaching on leadership, this this course they are doing now that their company is doing and paying so much money. Guess what? Those are the principles that I have taught, you know, some, you know, some seven, eight years ago, if not more than that. All they did was to change the language, but the principles are the same. Principles are the same. I was saying to my wife, you see, the same very thing. Imagine if I have to open, you know, a leadership school and all of that, they will be making money. <laughs> but that's not my heart desire. My heart desire is to impart your life. The things that you're hearing, I tell you, it work even in the workplace. Because listen to this, language may change, but the value system does not change. The principles does not change. Excuse me, which workplace does not want people to be committed, to be faithful, to be people of, you know, standard, to be ethical? 
all right to, to make sure that they use their sense of leadership and, and administration and the, and their sense of you know working with others as team hallelujah will not cause their you know their, their their productivity to rise of course that's what that is what drives productivity what drives productivity is not what you're selling it's the people amen behind the product it is the life. It is how the people understand themselves. It is how they see themselves. It is how they understand, amen, the chain of command, amen. It is how they understand leadership, amen. And it is how they are able to put to stop subordination. It is, it is those little, little, you know, effort they put into their products, all right? Or the values you add to the product. You see, all of these things that I can, I can start using, you know, you know, uh, uh, biz, biz, business and, and workplace language. And 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 and, I, and my spirituality will still be maintained, but certain people will have a will have a problem with that. And, but I can understand. But I'm saying that when God speaks to us, we should be able to understand what He's saying and be able to accurately communicate that to you know to the world in a way that they can understand. Maybe not the world. Maybe the world will never get to understand. But at least those that are growing up in the things of God, so that they can understand what the Lord Amen is saying. <clears throat> All right. So the fact that we say, you know, uh, economy, it doesn't mean that we're just basically talking about money. And I'm just using that as an example, like we have defined, like we have defined. And it will tell you that many of these Christians are not studying because if all they need to go do is just to go check the word economy. Just go look what does the word economy means. We have very shallow, you know, unproductive Christians today. Who are going around many of them are pastors many of them are leaders they have no sense of spiritual understanding and no wonder they are completely disconnected all right from the society and that's why they're going into all kinds of gimmicks all right to continue to sell their lies all right because if, if you're not if you're not if you, if you are connecting with the things of god amen and you're following the pattern of the spirit guess what the field should be a level playing field you shouldn't be dumbling your hand into all kinds of things to, to want to dazzle the people. We don't do that. We will stand as David stood before Pharaoh and engage Pharaoh. We will stand, amen, as Joseph stand in Egypt, amen, and engage, amen, you know, Pharaoh. We will stand as David stood, amen, and engage Goliath, amen. We will stand and engage the day, amen, as Esther in the palace, hallelujah, without a, a sense of, you know, insecurity, stood, hallelujah. And proclaim the day. So we have to understand all of this. What trigger what I'm saying? That time build. Build. How do you build things in the spirit? The same way you build things in the natural realm. The difference is one you can see. The others you can see. <laughs> Spiritual things must be built. That's what you know drew me to this. You know things that I've just said now. Spiritual things. Listen. Your spirit must be built. What I'm doing this every, every morning I come here. What am I doing? I'm building building your spirit I'm building your spirit I'm building your spirit and when your spirit start growing you yourself will feel it you will know it. <laughs> something is happening in my life yes why you may not see physically but you will know you know you've grown excuse me when the Bible says we are coming to the full stature of Christ how do, how do you think that's gonna happen and that is, that is the end goal, amen, of the Father for the church. That we come to the full stature. It is attainable. But do we believe it? Why do you think God gave us the fivefold ministry? Why do you think God gave us apostles, prophets, amen, pastors, teachers, evangelists? Why, why did God give us this ministry? The Bible says it's for the perfecting of the saints, First of all, the perfecting of the sins, meaning maturing. That word perfection, amen, means in the literal you know, uh, translation, means maturity. So, so we have to mature. Listen, when your spirit matures, your spiritual maturity must affect every area of your life, amen, including your, your values, your character, your behavior, amen. You cannot be spiritual, amen. And one aspect of your life, amen, is speaking something else. Spirituality, that's why we say we grow from inside out. Out. when we grow from inside out amen listen your spirituality affect 
overshadows every bible says the holy spirit will come upon you you will be overshadowed it means amen that that which is on the inside amen will override will over we you know we we will we, we, we superimpose itself amen on the outside but when you are dealing with just you know the outside and the spirit is not is not growing listen that's a superficial growth which of course never lasts because when something comes to challenge you you have no backbone. You have no capacity. That's why Christians collapse. They fail. They, you know, they, they compromise. I don't know. I can't take it again. Oh, yeah, because you never grow on the inside. All right. Somebody is abusing you and throwing you with all kinds of stones of furious, all kinds of you know and things attacking you, and you're just standing looking. Just standing there looking. You never say a word. Not like you can't say a word, but they told you say nothing. Say nothing. And the person finish and say thank you. You walk away. And you know that that kind of a thing will finish Bab Babylonians because they expect you to what? To fight back. I learned, I learned in a in a hard way that certain battles you just, you just have to walk away from them. Because those battles themselves, they are distractions. <laughs> they are there, they are basically programmed to distract you from the main battle. So if you're not careful, if you're just, you know, rush, rush kind of a person, all right, somebody says you react, you react. <laughs> Guess what? They will deplete, they will deplete your strength, amen, by one little demon sent to you. While the major power and principality, amen, that you ought to deal with, amen, is just there, you know, enjoying the day. Now you want to go fight. You have no more strength. You've been defeated by a little demon that you can walk away from. You have to learn, hallelujah, how to engage strategically. I'm talking about your spirit man being built. Because the Bible says Noah built. He built an altar. That altar, amen, was the point of establishing something mighty and powerful in his own life, in his own family, but also in the space that he's been brought into. You have to build an altar there. Building an altar means, amen, taking over, amen, the spiritual airspace, the, the spiritual airspace. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out without your awareness. You build an altar there. But I'm not talking about this this morning. This is not my focus. But I'm just establishing this because I think this is important that we highlight this. Your spirit needs to be built. If you're struggling in one area of your life, amen, uh, 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 don't focus more on that. Go into your spiritual you know, condition. There's something that is lacking there. If you're dealing with the issues of, remember there are three kinds of issues that we're dealing with. We dealt with that yesterday. Babylonians, amen, the fallen nature deals with lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Those are the three major battles. All the sin of this world. Mention that sin. Tell me that sin. They are all, amen, summarized in these three categories. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All right? A man cheating on his wife, a wife cheating on the husband, amen. A son becoming wayward, becoming rebellious, amen. Your boss trying to do ungodly things, amen. You don't know what is happening. You're feeling like compromising. All of everything that's going to happen to in terms of temptation, amen, are all boils down to those three things. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So those are, those are areas you've got to walk upon, amen. Lust of the eye. You've got to walk in the, in the dimension. Walk on what you see. How you see things. When you see things. Amen. Listen to this friends. By the grace of God. I can walk with anybody. Particularly women. And I've got a lot of women in my life. Guess what? Because it's something that I've, I've been working on for years. And I'm still working on it. Amen. You can, I, can, I can stay comfortably with a woman. Amen. That is not my wife. And I don't have any issue with that. Because I have developed. Amen. A spiritual grace. A, a position of strength. That I'm not looking. I'm not lusting at you. I'm looking into your spirit. I want to understand the condition of your soul. In fact, if you make a pass on me, I will have a pity on you because I understand. You see, that's, that's something every man must understand. That when, when a woman make a pass on you, don't look at her and get angry. No, look at her and have a pity on her because there is something that her soul is longing for that she believes is just about sex. She believes that, okay, if I can just throw myself on this guy, and it's, this, and it's both sides. It can be the woman. It can be the woman of the man. All right? It can be both sides. If, if you live in a condition where your soul is damaged, your soul will be looking for you know, attention in all kinds of things. 
Why do you think you know children you know are, are most and look for attention not because they're still growing but because all right their soul is still very much you know alive have you noticed that children are the most selfish people <laughs> children are the most selfish people oh you say oh, what, what 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 are you saying oh come on you've got to understand that in their innocency their innocency does not in fact their innocency help us to see their soul help us to see amen the condition of their soul the more that's why a, a, you know a sighted parent amen know what to do know what to do you, you, you see it's from the growth of your children that you know what they're going to become the spirit that may overrule them that may overcome them it's from that, you know, growing up that you, you begin to say, this child, this child is going to be selfish. This guy is going to be insecure. This child is going to be very proud. This child is going to be very, you know, uh, you, you start addressing that thing. That reminds me, there's a confession I wrote yesterday for children, you know, for, for parents. I, I, I'm, I'm going to share it with us later on. I just remember now, wow, I forgot. You see, you have to deal with, you have to deal with that. You're dealing with human nature. This has nothing to do with individuals. This is, we're dealing with the fallen human nature. And we all have a residue of them. No matter how perfected you are, amen. There is a residue, amen. There is, there is, there is that, you know, uh, 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 you know, fine line. Whatever it is. If, if your own may not be, you know, you know, uh, uh, 60-fold flesh, 100-fold. No, yours may even be 10-fold, 5-fold. It's still flesh. It's still flesh. Flesh is flesh. Are you getting the point that I'm making? We all have it. The fact that, you know, if sometimes I always say, if only the soul can speak. If only the soul can, you know, we, we can hear the voice of the thoughts. You'll be surprised. P people that you are lost enough after, people that are lost enough after you, you say, why are you talking about this? Because these are the issues that we're dealing with. You know, we like to, we, we like to ignore the, the main thing and focus on <laughs> the secondary things. But it doesn't work like that. Let's call it spade a spade. Come on. You see, every, every challenge in life, amen, has got a name. And I like to call them by name. If I'm dealing with lust, I like to, deal, I like to call the name lust. If I'm dealing with pride, I like to call it by name pride. If, if it's insecurity, I need to call that thing. You see, because if you're sure away from the name it means amen you yourself are you're dealing with something that you're not ready amen to you know to to open up to today the world system you know they they they, they, they talk about sex as, as if they're talking about you know uh, coca-cola you know you know i mean it, it means nothing to them because that's the plan all right reduce sex to just a pleasure and that's it but there is, there's more to it. So I'm saying that next time you look at all of this thing, you have to look at it from a vantage view and say, hey, this person is in need. This person, you see, a, a doctor that, that sees naked, naked men or naked women every day does, does not have a sense, amen, to assist them. Will be, of course, will be lost in after them. I mean, that's just natural. You see. That is the reason why a lot of pastors are falling. You know, they fall into all kind of sin. You know what? Because they, 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 they see, they see pe when people come to them, they see those people, amen, as vulnerable, you know, as, as an opportunity, or an opportunity for them to express their pleasure. I don't see that. And I didn't say that I, I, I was born like that. No, I grew up into that understanding that when, when, people, when people come to me or somebody said, assist me, I need a help. I, I, I see the weakness, I see the problem of that person, and I want to. Even if you decide to come to me naked, I will tell you, sorry, it doesn't work like that. I understand that you need something, but this thing that you're seeking for is not going to work. All right, It's not going to work because this one, yes, you will enjoy it. It's a pleasure for a minute. And after that, what happens? Do you want to live with the consequence that will destroy your life, destroy your values, destroy every other thing that you, you have? Come on, you have to, you, you know, you got to think. So if people sometimes, you just need to be able to help them to understand. That's why I keep saying, listen, for people fight, you know, uh, there's prostitutes that, you know, uh, you know, homosexuals. I said, no, no, you're fighting the wrong thing. You've got to understand why people are doing what they're doing. If you cannot see beyond the curtain, you've got to remove the curtain and say, well, what turned this guy to, you know, to, you know, to a prostitute? What turned this lady, amen, to, you know, what, what is this, what is, your soul is crying out. There's a, there's a cry out for a soul. That's why people, you know, would do all kinds of things. 
some some people would just you know deliberately you know do crazy things all of that is seeking attention it's seeking attention you also do it come on <laughs> you seek attention in all kinds of things even as christians we do it sometimes amen this thing we're dealing with is very is very 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 strong Sometimes if people don't say amen, you know, if people don't, don't like what you post, <laughs> something in you begin to feel. <laughs> I, have, I have to learn, amen, no, not to be bothered about who likes my post or who doesn't like my post. Because you are human. The fallen nature will begin to, you know, what, why, what did I say? Why are people not liking it? All right? And the one that like it or the one that comment wrongly, all right, get you angry. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand this is the beauty of the job i told you two things I, I i seek to know in life i want to know god i also want to know people as i know myself as i know myself you must know yourself you must know you must know your limits you must know, amen, your flaws. You must know your strength. You must know your weakness. You must know it. Because all of that help you to know how to pray. How to pray. I prayed, Lord, I want to die. I want to die to, to, to pleasures, to desires that, is, that will not glorify you. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Listen, no matter how you put, you know, pressure on your body, it's not going to work. Somebody say, uh, because I don't want to sin again. Uh, I'm not going to watch this movie. I'm not yes, it's good not to. But this, those things is not the problem. It is the condition of your soul. If you're trying to resolve amen, an internal damage with an ex, external thing, hey, you're just dealing with the surface. You have to go deep on the inside. What is causing me? You know, many people, their issue of insecurity, their issue of dysfunctionality, amen, was sown as a seed when they were born. You have to trace this thing. You have to find a way of dealing with it. Or else, friends, you'll be struggling. You'll be, you'll be wondering. The, the, the sin will be seasonal. There are seasonal sin. There are seasonal issues in our life. Because the devil knows when to trigger those things. But when you offer your life to God, that's why this man built an altar. When you offer, you see, when you build an altar, what do you do? You lay a sacrifice there. <laughs> yes, you can't offer, you can't offer sacrifice without first building an altar. That's how the things of God is. Amen. Yes, there are altars, there are sacrifices you don't need an altar for, but there is one sacrifice that will kill sin in your life, that will finish sin in your life. It's called, amen, the sacrifice of burnt offering. Where all the strength, you know, why do you do burnt offering? Amen. To, to kill, to, you know, to, to burn the fat. The fat represents the strength. So a burnt, a burnt offering, amen, is burning the fat. The Bible says the priest must not eat the fat. The fat belongs to God. The fat belongs to God. Those were the fat, amen, the sons of, <laughs> the sons of Aaron. Uh, no, no, not Aaron now. Uh, Eli were eating. They just go put the fork, get the thing, eat. Empowering the, their soul. There are things you do, amen, that will continue to empower your soul. And that makes you weaker spiritually. So we have to engage things, amen, that weakens the soul, but empowers the spirit. Yes. So he built, he built, he built an altar unto God. Have you noticed that after he offered the sacrifice, the next thing, God made a covenant. You want to walk with God in the path of covenant, build an altar. Build an altar. Lay your life on the altar daily. The Bible says that we present ourselves daily unto God. Daily unto God. A living sacrifice. Why is it living? Back in those days, hallelujah, you offer, amen, God, amen, a living sacrifice that is dead. Yes. But today, of course, you can't lay yourself on the altars, you know, <laughs> you know, like those ungodly people do. No. It says condition of life. When we pray like this, we pray offering our heart on the altar. We say, Lord, every ounce of strength in me, everything in my life that defines me, that gives me a voice, that gives me a sense of personality, 
I, I laid them all on the altar. I want everything that my life represents, amen, to come from you. Come from you. It's from that point that they will send you. That why you still why you're still speaking is something about your life is called an aura. You see, a spiritual man is one who carries an aura of God. <laughs> That's why you call the presence of God. When you walk into a place, you just you just like the atmosphere. Whew. You say things, people. Have you met people like that? When you start speaking, everywhere is like this. They want to listen. Your, your presence commands their attention. It's not you, it's God. It's, it's the God that you carry. You know, like, I'm not the best orator. I know that. I'm very, I'm very aware of my, my limitation. All right? I mean, a man who struggles with dyslexia. So it's difficult for me. I thank God for the breakthrough. Thank God for the grace. But that's part of the calling. Amen. So, but, but when I speak... Nations here, people here, they wonder what, uh, well, they're better orators than me. Because they focus on, on oratory. I'm not, I'm not focusing on oratory. I'm focused on the life in the spirit. My words as spirit and their life. Because I drop from the well, from the well of my spirit man. If we cannot live from that dimension, if we cannot live from the depth, listen, you'll be speaking language, you'll be speaking good English. And it will just be all entertainment. Your word will not carry life. Will not carry power. Your word will not move anything. I told God, Lord, I want to speak. And when I speak, I want power to back my words. God says, walk in holiness. Walk in purity. The, the pure in heart will see God. When you see God, you will see his ways. <laughs> you will see his power. You will, you will be able to command Alia, heavenly things into, into earthly realms. It's a price. There's a price for this, friends. But it's doable. We're talking about entering the new day. And we're saying we have to deal with all of these issues. All of these distractions. Whatever it is in our life. Or whatever it is. That the enemy can use as a gateway. As a doorway. If, it, if, if your window is open, it will, it will, it will enter through that window. <laughs> You understand? If the window is open, he will squeeze himself through that window. So you want to make sure that every aspect, amen, is blocked, is locked. You are secure. Your home is secure. Your family is secure. It's from there we engage. Because there are periods in our life we have to go to bed. You go to bed, the doors are not well fastened, locked. Guess what? The enemy <laughs> may sneak in. But we're not afraid of him. But we're saying we must not be, also be casual we must not we must not take things for granted i guess that's the that's the point we must not take things for granted you've got to when you wake up in the morning don't assume that you know you you have what it takes you don't have what it takes to engage the day no you don't have what it takes to engage the day you don't even know what is going to happen the next hour that's why it's important it's reasonable amen, to go to god in the place of prayer Lord, I present myself. Even if you had all victory yesterday, it's a brand new day. New devils. Every day has its own new devils. As there are new opportunities, there are also new enemies. The Lord said to me, the higher you go, the, the, you know, the more you face certain powers. Have you noticed that the real power controlling the earth and the, are not in the earth realm? They are in the spiritual realm, in high places, the Bible says. So the farther you go in the things of the spirit, don't be, don't be carried away that, oh wow, we're gliding in the spirit. There are powers, principalities, authorities, wicked spirits in high places. High places mean beyond the realm of men, beyond the realm of human mind. So when we say high places, or of course we always look up. Yes, they're up, but the word up basically is not just in the sky. They're not in the sky. They're in the realm of the spirit, a realm beyond human reach, a realm beyond human control. They control you. They seek to control you. They've been controlling families, homes, cities, nations for centuries. 
if you fall into what others fall into, if you don't know what, you know what you need to know, guess what? They will control you. Even when you think you've given your life to Jesus, those things don't care. Because they'll be looking for those areas that you have not given. You see, we can give, we can say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Yes, Jesus is coming into your life. Your spirit man is open. But there are well-positioned well realities in your soul that you have not given up to Jesus. I've met people who say, well, you know, I, I, I gave my life to Jesus. shouldn't stop me from smoking. I said, well, if that's what you believe, it's fine. But don't you think that your smoking is destroying the temple of, of, the, temple of the Lord? If, Jesus, if you say you've given your life to Jesus, your body becomes a temple of Jesus. And science tells us that the smoking itself, you know, is dangerous to the body. I said, don't you think that smoking is destroying? So let's not even go into the theology aspect. But you're destroying the temple. And they will find all. So people will you see argument. That's why the Bible says we we rest not against flesh and uh, flesh and blood, but against against principalities and power, against arguments. There are arguments. There are people like that. You can you can never win them in argument. No, no. There is nothing you say. They will always tell you something else. Such people don't even bother because they will get you to a point where. All right, you will begin to feel resentment. You don't want to do that. So don't even begin to argue with them. That's why I don't engage myself in ungodly arguments. I, I like a situation where we can look into the word together and try to figure out what God is saying. But in a point where you're trying to use the soul to try to sh force me to see things that are not in line with the word of God, I tell you, excuse me, sorry, I'm not going to do that. Because you know, Paul said you must desist from that. You know where that is going to end. The soul is very strong. My, 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 my ministry, amen, as a prophet, which most prophets don't do, is to expose the soul. Because you, you can only be spiritual to the degree you understand the power of the soul. Oh, I love, I love that statement. You can only be spiritual to the degree you understand the power, the power of your soul. And you're, listen to this. Your soul is never on the good side. Your soul is never in support for you to serve God. You have to, you have to arm strong. You have to, you have to uncuff, uncuff the soul <laughs> and lay it on the altar. You have to be brutal with the soul. The soul will tell you, continue to sleep. You know, why bother? The soul will tell you, rest. The soul will tell you, don't, don't, don't mind them. The soul, the soul will always suggest convenience. The soul loves convenience. But you and I understand that in the things of God, we have not a continuous city. We have to continue to press further. So to, to be spiritual, you have to be deliberate. That's a powerful statement I've just made. To be spiritual, you have to be deliberate. Because the soul doesn't like people that are deliberate. The soul does not like people that are disciplined. The soul does not like, amen, when you're able to say no to what everybody's saying yes to. The soul does not like, amen, when, when you are able to walk away from things that people are walking to. All right? The soul doesn't like it. The soul always has something to prove. That's why, amen, pride lives in the soul realm. And pride is one of the major, major, you know, somebody is dying. Somebody needs a help. But pride will tell you, no, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> Have you met people like that? I mean, you are you are in need. You you need to cry for help. The soul will be telling you that you, you'll be disgracing yourself if you cry for help. The soul will be telling you if you if you if you cried for help, you will feel vulnerable. People will use that against you. Excuse me, you're dying. That's why people die. Some people die in their house. Days nobody knows. You know why? Because one of the things in their life is pride. Pride. Self-assertion. It's good to have, a, a, you know, some good dosage of self-assertion. You need to know who you are. You need to be able to stand. But not to certain degree that, all right, you, you cannot humble yourself. You cannot call your neighbor and say, please, I need help. No, 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 no. I don't want my neighbor to know what I'm doing. The world is going, no, no, no. Excuse me. When certain situation happened in your life, you need to. <laughs> Peter began to sink. He had to cry out. Master, help me. Oh, well, it will still be proving. No, no, no. I've got the faith. You're already sinking. You see how the Titanic sunk? <laughs> the British people thought we've built the best ship that cannot sink. 
This one, nothing can sink it. They made the biggest mistake of their life. That 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 sinking of the Titanic, all right, was a pr prophetic, you know, a, a, a message to the world back in those days. This one cannot. Uh -uh. Never you say oh, I cannot fall. Not even me. I can never tell you. Ah, Isaac can never fall. The moment you say that, God will make sure you fall. Just to humble you. It will make sure. It will make sure you fall. <laughs> there are things you don't say. You live on the grace of God. You live on the grace of God. You don't boast in your pride, in your, in your righteousness. Your righteousness, the Bible says, is like a filthy rag before God. You come to him daily. You come in that childlike baby faith. Lord, I'm coming to you. I need strength. I need grace. Even if they are daily loading you with power and energy and resource and they are prospering you, you don't stop. You never for one day take your eyes off him and begin to look at the prosperity and begin to look at the strength and begin to look at how you have become. Ah, that is becoming Lucifer. The moment Lucifer took his eyes off God and began to look at himself, began to look at his glory, began to look at the things that he is doing on behalf of God, he said, ah, you're coming down. The secret of success in life, amen, is that when you begin to get successful, don't keep your eyes on the success. Keep your eyes on successor. Those that will take over from you, keep your eyes on them as you keep your eyes on the Lord. The moment you're successful, the first thing to begin to look for is, who is going to succeed this? And begin to prep them, begin to prepare them. Or else you can be so successful and you die in your success without, amen, transferring that to the next generation. We have to develop that capacity. The ability to, that, you see, that's why everything I do, particularly to those following us, is free. I give it to you for free. I know it's not free. It cost me something. It's, it, it's costing me my life. Yes. You have to wake up. You have to do, yes. And you give for free yes are you crazy you giving it for free yes it's free but i understand that it's not free because you see there's a god who pays me and he has all kinds of ways to pay you if you put a price on it guess what you have received your reward in the day you are going to be needing some certain kind of help you you, you can't get it because you never sowed there you can't sow where you you can't rip where you have not sown come on friends Oh, I love, I love the way that, you see, this, this is not the pattern of how I felt the Lord was going to speak to us this morning. But I like it when God can just, you know, take us on a detour and bring us to the place that he needs to emphasize. So we can live, constantly live, live in that condition, amen, of, of his glory. So uh, uh, Noah built an altar and there he offered a sacrifice and the Lord caught a covenant with him. And I felt that is very important. This brand new day, the Lord wants to establish, amen, a new covenant. Uh, let me just take you quickly to Hebrews chapter 8, because this is where I want to round up this morning. Hebrews chapter 8. Let's look at it from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 8, 7 and 8. But if that first covenant been without fault, if that first covenant, amen, had been without fault, no place would have been sought for for a second. So there was a second, you know, a, a covenant. There was a first covenant. There was a second covenant. Now, what is a covenant? Covenant basically, amen, is, is, is an agreement that God enters with a generation based on what an individual or a group, amen, but mostly an individual, amen, comes into in terms of righteousness, all right? So what, what's going on right now is as we're stepping into this new day, listen friends, this is very important. As we're stepping into this new day, God is looking for, amen, a new generation, a new, a new kind of men and women that he can cut a covenant, all right, that will carry that which he is doing in this season, all right, to the next generation. You see, covenant is the transport, is the is the transport in you know, a vehicle or the tr yeah or, or well let's let's say is 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 that transport all right that carries the, the 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 things of God from one generation all right to another. That's covenant. All 
all right it is it is from that covenant that god operates it's that covenant that protects us <clears throat> It is that covenant that guides us. It is that covenant that God makes, amen, that allow us to move in the midst of op op oppositions and challenges and carry his purpose into the next. Check, check the scripture. And beyond the scripture, go read history. There are certain people who carry, amen, the spiritual reality of, of, the, next, of the next speakings of God. They present themselves. They, they offer themselves. And God said, okay, I can find you. I can use you. So God poured his, his plan, his purpose. That's what I call the economy of God. God found these people worthy and faithful. So God poured himself. Whatever God is going to do in that season, in the next generation, he has poured it into this individuals and god expect these individuals amen to carry that and begin to you know transmit that amen into the spiritual atmosphere amen of this of the, of the new day that's how god moves all right so so we see god establishing covenants amen with with noah because amen noah understood something you see it wasn't god that said to noah build a, build an altar you see that is what i'm saying we must have that spiritual intuition we must have that spiritual understanding noah understood that coming out of the ark amen and stepping into this vast reality amen of a new earth requires that he connects with god and to connect with god amen he has to build amen uh, an altar so that establishing of the altar in the earth opens the pot of heaven amen for heaven to begin to pour amen the, the next intentions and, and plans and purposes and and directions and 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 you know activities and objectives for the earth into noah so noah became amen the father of a new generation by building an altar he established the purpose of God. He established some things for his, for his family. Amen. And that is important. And of course, if you begin to track Noah further, you realize that he, 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 he goofed. He made a mistake. Why? Because the earth now begins to yield. The earth begins to produce. The Bible says he planted vineyard. Amen. And the wine that came from the vineyard. Amen. He drank of it and he got drunk. Now listen, friends. That's something we have to also learn. Because that that attitude, that uh, 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 you know, uh, um, condition, that position that Noah found himself disfigured, frustrates something, amen, in the activities of God. So what I'm saying is, our life, amen, is a mirror. Our life is a conduit of what God is doing. We have to be very careful as the Lord brings us into this new day and is establishing new covenant. He found fault with the first covenant. Why? Because, listen to this, and I'm going to quickly show you. In fact, let me read the scripture. Let me read the scripture as I begin to round up this morning. For if that first covenant had been without fault, can God give us a covenant that is faulty? No. The covenant was not faulty. It is how people engage with the covenant. Just like amen, how you know Noah engaged with the covenant. There was something that something that went wrong in his life, all right, that caused God to abandon that covenant and start looking for amen, uh, 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 a new generation that he can use that will bring forth his purposes and desire, amen, into reality. For if the for if that first covenant had been without fault, no place would have been sought for for the second. If the first was good, why would, we, why would you be needing another one? But God found fault with the people. He didn't find fault with the covenant. He found fault with the people. That's the point that I'm making this morning. He found fault with the people. Covenant ought to be carried by people. Covenant are made with people. If we, if God makes covenant with us, amen, and we falter, all right, we reject the covenant, we, we trample on the covenant, because covenant is an agreement. If you live righteous, if you walk in this path, this is what is going to happen. You can read about that. I, I'm not talking about covenant this morning. But covenant is a position of agreement. God keeps his own side of agreement. But we're not keeping our own side of agreement. The Bible says, but he found fault with the people. Then he said, behold, the days are coming. I'm reading Hebrews 8.8 8 now. Behold, the days are coming. Listen to this. He didn't say the day. He said the days are coming. So you can see this is, this is a continual process. All right. 
after the fall of Noah, amen, and that generation, God began, amen, to look for, amen, a redemptive generation, a generation that will come into his plan, his purpose. God found Abraham. From Abraham, God found David. And all of this, God has been finding people, amen, that his plan, his program. Listen to this. The things of God are transferred from, from people to people. When, when you track the movement of the things of God from Adam, you discover that God has been looking for a family. And this, 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 this has nothing to do with, you know, some people say, well, you know, the generation of Noah, you know, the sons of Noah were, you know, were killed with, you know, were, Yes, we're killed because, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the first son, you know, the, of course, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the last born made a mistake all right, by looking at the nakedness of his father. And people say, well, that is where Africa came from. So Africa is the cursed nation. That's not true. And in fact, if that is true, guess what? Jesus Christ came and canceled all of that. He himself came down as the establishment of the covenant. Amen. He established. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, all of the things, all of the traveling of the things of God from the old covenant all came to a stop when Christ came to earth. The full reality of God's program for humanity. He came and he established the new. The Bible says he's broken down the wall of partition. Amen. He's made the two one. So people who are still standing on that idea, because I've read a you know, one or two uh, posts not, uh, of late when this issue of black race and, you know, racism and, you know, black life matter. Some people are bringing that and say, well, you know, the reason why, you know, I, 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 um, you know, the white people are, are better in terms of race is because, you know, they came from this tribe. They came from this lineage. They say, look at these blind people. You're supposed to be Christians. Don't you understand scripture? Why do you think the Bible talk about the old covenant and the new covenant? In the new covenant, there are no race. There's no tribe. There's no color. Amen. There's no language. What am I saying? I say in Christ, we are all become one. While we keep our human identity in every tribe, in every race, in every color, in every nationality. Listen to this. You find the Christ race. You find, amen, the, the nation of God there. And I don't want to go into all of that this morning, but that's just the truth. All right? What makes us unique today? What makes us the nation of God? What makes us a people in the earth? Amen. It's not from where we come from. It's the life that we connect to in Christ Jesus. All right. So that is an argument that is flawed, completely flawed. And that, of course, that's a wrong theology. The Bible says, but God found fault with the people and said, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. Of course, these were the two covenants that God used. Two, two tribes that God used to establish what you would define, amen, as the new covenant. Because it's through, amen, the lineage of Judah. Remember, Jesse. Of course, Jesse leads to the father, amen, of, of, of David. Which, of course, connects to the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can trace the genealogy. All right, all of that, amen, speaks into this new covenant that we have in Christ. So, what am I saying? I was trying to bring out this word Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. The days are coming. The day, it didn't say the day, the days. So, we are living in the day where the Lord is establishing new covenant as we have been brought into newness, as we, as we have been brought, hallelujah, into a new season, into a new reality of God's kickstart his prophetic program again in the earth we have to develop listen to the friends we have to develop a sense of the new covenant this new covenant is not just about the establishment of the church is it's about the establishment amen of the prophetic program of god for the redemption of the earth because what we have done in the church, amen, is to reduce all of the things that God is doing to just the gathering of the saints, uh, the, the, the new covenant church, all right, with the church. No, beyond how we gather, there is something God is doing in the earth. There is a move of God, amen, in, in among leaders, among even politicians, amen, among the world of science. There is a, God is moving across the earth. God is moving, amen, within creation, hallelujah. God is moving within every facet of human existence. And we have to have that broad understanding. And each of us play a role. So in your own 
position and understanding of this new covenant. Let's, let's find how to track how to move out, how to connect, how to engage. Our sense of engaging the word of God, looking into the scripture has to be re-enhanced. Amen. We have to update amen, our prophetic position. Amen. In how we pray, how we look at nations, how we look at society. You see, all of this issue of the Black Lives Matters movement and all of this thing that is turning up, all of that is creating a platform for us to see something. The earth is changing. All right. The idea of how, you know, the world was defined amen, in the past is drastically changing. So why are you looking at what is going on on the street? You, you have to be able to read the prophetic implication that God is even, you see, when we don't get certain things right in the spirit, God will allow certain things to happen in the natural realm to show us. Just like the handwriting, amen, was shown in the palace, amen, for, you know, for, 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 you know, for, for, you know, for Belshazzar to see. They, they, they had to they had to do certain things amen for for us to be awakened and what, what's going on yes so we when we look at all that is happening we don't just reduce it to just some march and movement we want to understand that there's a shift in the earth just like there was a shift amen in in, in, in 1968 and, and 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 the devil hijacked amen that that move in 1968 the devil hijacked it there is a move again in our day in the 20 in 2020 there is a move today taking place in the earth and we will not allow the enemy amen to hijack this where certain ungodly policies will be made amen to destroy humanity because that's the plan of the enemy listen to this even among the concept of the black life matters we have to look at things from the eyes of the spirit so in the in the name of searching for freedom the devil does not give us amen some freedom that destroy the destiny and the future of our children in the name of we want freedom man can never give us freedom institution can never give us freedom i want yes i want i want the idea of racism to be destroyed but i also understand that that is also coming all right with certain subtle you know ideas and 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 and, and values all right the, have you noticed that within the concept of the black life matters movement right now you will find the gay movement that you find all of these things so how do how do you make you know a decision within the complexity of what is going on that's the point that i'm making are you seeing that so while all of this thing is happening this is the time for us to pray this is the time for us to take charge in the spirit. This is the time to begin to engage, amen, and declare that, amen, we will deal with racism, but we will not allow a situation where a freedom that will destroy, amen, the innocence of our children, amen, to also be brought in because everything is coming. You see, the left are hijacking this now. What they call the deep state, they are hijacking the black life movement. They are hijacking it. That's what the devil does. Once the devil finds an opportunity, all right, something he can use, amen, he can ride upon. That's what the devil does. He, 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 he likes to ride on the wave. Once there's something happening, once, you see, when God starts moving in the earth, the church is the, is the last person to catch it because we are, we're fast asleep. But thank God for those that God has placed in the, in the forefront. They can see this thing. They can understand what the devil is doing. All right? And they know what God is doing. So we are not naive, neither are we blind. While I want, amen, racism to be, to be neutralized, to be destroyed. And every issue, amen, that, 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 that speaks into disparity. But I will not also, amen, vote for that which will say, amen, let children be given the right where they can have sex, where they can be destroyed. Where, you know, all, all of this, because they are, all, they are all coming all in the name of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Uh, we've got to see all of this. We've got to see all of this. So why you're watching news? Why you're reading news? When people just live there and say, hey, black, be careful. Make sure you scan, amen, what they are not saying. That's why I said to my, I said to somebody some time ago, I said, Donald Trump made the biggest mistake in his administration. When this thing began, he should have come out, he should have take a stand. I didn't say take a side. Take a stand and say, this is not accepted. We will not allow an innocent person. You see what happened with the, uh, uh, with, with the Prime Minister of Canadian when he saw how amen, that indigenous uh, you know, chief was being choked. The, he, he said, no, this is, this is, this is not going to be accepted. Not am I saying that the you know, Canadians you know, are more righteous, but there is a steering, there's an awakening, and that's very important. Donald Trump should have made a statement. 
this kind of a thing should not be allowed. We will investigate it and we will bring a man, the person who did this, a man to justice. Finish. You would have quenched the fire. No, no, no. He, 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 in his pride. Guess what? I've said this before. Is God using Donald Trump? Of course God is using Donald Trump. God, God needed a type of a Donald Trump to fight, amen, the, the well-established, you know, cabal, the, the political cabal that, that are, you know, that have established themselves. They, they, you know, I, I call them, amen, the Jezebel spirit. They built altars in America and all over the world, amen. <laughs> so God is using somebody like Donald Trump. To pull, the, to pull them down. And God needed somebody like Donald Trump, amen, who was not part of, you know, the, the political system. He was part of, but he is in the economic system. You've got to understand that. So God needed somebody like him to do that, to, to play that role. Does that mean that he's righteous? Does that mean that, amen, he has no flaw in his life? Does that mean that everything he does, amen, is all correct? And if he does something wrong, we must look away because God is using him. Absolutely not. The people around him should have told him, uh, Mr. President, this one, you, you, you're making a big mistake. Please, this is a battle for the mass. You better make a statement and you better say something that is going to quench the fire. You know what he did? He took, he, he took petrol and poured it in the fire <laughs> with his statement. That's bad leadership. That is called bad leadership. When there's an opera and things are going crazy, you, you, don't, you don't incite the crowd. You don't say things. You don't threaten the crowd. No. People are willing to die. You see, I mean, do we forget what happened in Egypt? In the days of Mubarak, you know? People, when it comes to people's identity and freedom, they are willing to lose their life. So, all of this are teaching us something of, of how to engage, of how to move in our day. We don't want to become casualty. Neither do we want to be blind to what God is doing. You see, when God is moving in the earth, we need prophetic interpretation. This is that. When God began to move in the upper room, amen, and certain people began to rababa, kataye, lelema. What happened? The people around say, this is the ninth hour. I can't, I can't, how can people be so drunk? Early in the morning, what's going on? Somebody had to rise up and say, we are not drunk. This is what has been prophesied. What you're seeing happening is a prophetic fulfillment taking place. We need people like that in our day. People that can give us clear interpretation of what is going on prophetically, amen, on the street, amen, of New York. What is going on somewhere in Canada? What is going on, amen, somewhere in France? All, all the things happening, amen, in South Africa. We need clear prophetic, amen, interpretation. So we, not, we, we do not misjudge and we don't come into a wrong conclusion. Amen. It's a new day. We have to have a well mature sense of engagement. We have to be well furnished. We have to be well informed. We have to be well developed. We have to be prayerful. Amen. We have to take our place on the wall. We have to be watching day and night so that, amen, the day does not crap on us like a thief in the night. Father, we honor you this day. What a word. What a declaration this morning. What, what a way to speak to us in starting a brand new week. Thank you once again for adjusting our sight. Thank you once again, Lord, for giving us insight, foresight, and sight. Thank you for, yes, building your intentions in us again. Wisdom is building this house and we celebrate your expression. May every ears hear this truth. May every heart willing, seeking, what is God doing in the earth? May they come in contact with this truth. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we will not find ourselves in the place where we get drunk even as we step into this new day. Lord, as you continue to establish the covenant of the new day before us, help us to know how to keep our path. Lord, we need your grace to be able to walk in what is required of us in this brand new day. Help us. You've spoken so much to us this morning. Help us not to allow lust of the, air, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, oh God, to bring us to a place where we are, yes, where we submit ourselves to the lies of the enemy. Help us to understand the conditions of the human heart. Help us to see that when certain things are happening around us, help us to hear and see what we are not seeing. Help us to understand, oh God, 
how to relate, how to deal with people. Help us, Spirit of God, to know that you have given us. You say you've given us the earth. Father, help us, O oh God, to take delivery. Help us to be responsible. Help us to be accountable. We need grace. We need strength. We need wisdom. We need knowledge. We need the, count, the counsel of heaven, yes, to lead us. We think our place this morning. We declare, may your kingdom once again lead us further, O oh God. We bind ourselves this morning to the will of God. We bind our mind to the counsels of God. We proclaim this morning that Christ reigns in us. His will is established in our home, in our family, in the lives of our loved ones. We pray for them this morning as we begin to rise up as a nation. Even as we get to the point of celebrating June 16, we pray help us to understand what true freedom means. Help us to understand oh God, what this nation needs. This nation, oh God, yes, is at the precipice of a new thing. Well, help us to define what this newness means. Help us, oh God, to rise up and begin to speak as your voice. We pray in Jesus' name, oh God, that the lies of the enemy over this nation will not stand. Over South Africa, it will not stand. No, it will not stand. We take our place. We take our position this morning. And we proclaim, let the righteousness of God flow into this nation as a mighty river. Take your place. May your kingdom come. We lift up our president. We pray wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for him and his cabinet, oh God. We thank you, Spirit of God, that you will continue to walk, oh God. Yes, within the, within the corridors of of the powers that be within the corridors leadership of this nation father we thank you for a change oh god government we thank you for a government that is responsible a government oh god that is accountable thank you for men and women who oh god will give themselves oh god yes to effective leadership and management we bless you spirit of god may your spirit continue to walk in this land as you walk across oh god the continent as you walk within the sadek region as you walk within oh god yes africa we thank you for your power yes that has been established this morning we bless you we honor you for what your spirit is doing across the globe yes in europe in america in asia we bless you oh god let your power let your kingdom come let that which oh god the enemies are as planned and established let it collapse oh god we thank you right now that light yes is shining in every area of life no more darkness let truth prevail let healing flow let righteousness exalt your people, oh God, we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to give thanks to God this morning once again for the privilege to be able to share the word of God. Of course, to pray and seek the face of God. So much the Lord has revealed to us this morning. I want to believe that this word you've taken to heart. Please, let's continue to live within the reality of this truth let's continue to engage ourselves in in this truth let's continue to look into our hearts into our lives and allow god amen to perfect his work in us christ in us the hope of glory let christ continue to perfect amen his intention in your life well have yourself a prosperous week ahead may god continue to inject you with his wisdom knowledge and understanding may you be a solution out there may that which you stand for and represent be that which will carry the day, even in your workplace. Thank you so much, everyone. Please, let's continue to pray for what we're doing here. Appreciate your prayer. Appreciate your connection and your effort. God bless you. And for those people who are watching us, of course, we'll, most time I don't see you guys. Thank you so very much this morning for connecting. Those that will be listening later on, uh, uh, I guess Facebook must have changed the whole uh, uh, interface because I can't see anybody's name. I only see, you know, when I'm broadcasting, I only see faces, some faces, you know, in front. But I, I, I can't see anybody's name, so I can't even call your name. So please pardon me for that. It's not deliberate. It's just, I, I guess a new interface on on broadcast so but thank you so very much appreciate your connection please uh, uh, let's continue to stand in righteousness and continue to advance in truth may god continue to bless you and strengthen you may he continue to increase you in his wisdom in his knowledge and of course in the understanding that is required to represent his plan and his purpose remember that if you continue to work with god his, his, his light in you will continue to shine forth and you'll continue to overcome. So God bless you. I hope to see you tomorrow, or maybe later in the day. All right. Uh, this week, uh, like I said, we need to begin to 
get ourselves ready for our leadership, uh, prophetic leadership school. All right. Uh, we've left that for a while now. I will need to deal with all of the things I've been dealing with. But uh, I just sense in my spirit a few days ago that it's time to we need to begin to get ourselves ready again for school, our leadership prophetic school. And let's just see how far the Lord will take us. And of course, I need to complete the teachings we've been doing on God's economy. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you. Bye-bye.